ஹலோ வியூர்ஸ் நமஸ்தே வணக்கம் அண்ட் டுடே வி ஹாவ் மிஸ்டர் வினய் பகாரியா சீஃப் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃபீஸர் ஆஃப் யூனியன் மியூச்சுவல் ஃபண்ட் வித் அஸ் டு ஷேர் ஹிஸ் வியூஸ் ஆன் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் யூனோ யூனியன் மியூச்சுவல் ஃபண்ட் ஸ்கீம்ஸ் அண்ட் இன் ஜென்ரல் தி எக்கானமி மிஸ்டர் வினய் பகாரியா இஸ் தி சீஃப் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃபீஸர் ஆஃப் யூனியன் அசெட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் கம்பெனி பிரைவேட் லிமிடெட் and he has earned his bcom and master in management studies he has more than 18 years of experience in the field earlier he was you know working as a senior equity fund manager with the investor mutual fund now which time he visited even our office once and you know we are glad to be associated with him earlier to that he has worked with dbs cholamandalam amc you know mutual fund and other couple of in his very early part of the career other couple of stock broking firms today union mutual fund manages more than more than 5000 crores of assets of which equity schemes uh, you know amount to about 3000 plus crores um, in the recent past since joining of vinay paharia union mutual fund has been doing very well and you know Uh, the performance of most of the schemes are very consistent and doing well and we all know that the union mutual fund is a branch child of union bank of india union bank of india is more than 100 years old and uh, now in the recent past andhra bank and corporation bank have been merged with the union bank so union bank operates all over india with more than 9000 branches so it has a strong parent and union bank is a public sector enterprise owned by government of india now getting into it you know vinay namaste so namaste <laughs> very good uh, just you know um, first of all con- congratulations most of your schemes you know the ma- managed by union mutual fund has been doing well particularly you know you are more i, I think a strong player in equity side um, so in the recent past it could be any scheme in a hybrid small cap mid cap uh, large and mid cap flexi cap balanced advantage fund any category you name it you are doing well first of all congratulations to you and your team who are, who are doing a wonderful job on behalf of the investors now thank you yeah welcome vinay tell us about the markets investors are puzzled generally and the market is going up and up you know some people thought when it came nifty 50 index came like 10000 it was high and then 12 14 15 now 15 500 you know somewhere between 15 and 15 500 so you know where the market is going and what is happening in the market how to interpret or understand this for a general investor sure so one of the ways to look at markets is like uh, investors should not look at stock prices because stock prices will always fluctuate however they will fluctuate around their fair values fair values are far more stable than market prices over a longer period of time fair values grow at almost the nominal gdp growth rates and hence it is very important that investors focus on what is the underlying fair value so for example in march the drop in fair value was just about 10% but the drop in market prices was more than 30% and similarly now there is some recovery in the fair value but the recovery in markets is much higher so markets will always fluctuate it is just like a weighing scale on one side of the weighing scale you have uh, stocks individual companies and on the other side you of the weighing scale you have market prices in the short term when whenever you uh, look at a weighing scale it will always fluctuate right it will try to judge what is the worth of the uh, uh, weight however over a period of time the weighing scale will correctly judge what should be the uh, weight we, should be the weight and similarly market prices will always judge what is the worth of an asset uh, over a medium to long term so we would encourage investors look at the underlying fair value India is a structural growth story the fair values of companies in India are growing at double digit pace sometimes you buy this growing fair value at a slightly higher price which will result in your prospective returns falling sometimes you are able to buy this fair value at a cheaper price due to which your prospective returns might be higher but over a longer period of time 
your uh, outcomes will be very similar to the changes in fair value which for india is reasonably strong and hence we remain uh, broadly optimistic uh, on the markets over a medium to long term basis very good very good that is uh, you know welcome uh, thing to hear from you uh, how long you know do you think that you know i understand that yes markets can go up and down etc i truly agree but how long this party can continue in your expectation you know probably next to one year two year three year in the sense you know people like our mood how how it swings down and up you know during various phases of our life or you know employment or business whatever it is so similarly how long this uh, party can continue are you really worried about the market upswing or you are happy which way to put it yeah so i would highly like to highlight uh, what is the underlying risk in the markets so that investors are able to accurately judge that and then take the decisions accordingly so one of the very crucial components in the markets valuation today is lower interest rates so today the markets are uh, are valued where they are because of ultra low interest rates if the underlying interest rates and when i'm talking about interest rates i'm talking about long term interest rates uh, interest rates which are stretching from 10 years to 30 years if the long term interest rates start moving upwards either in the developed world uh, followed by india that should be a real big risk which the investor should watch out for because we should remember equity is a long duration asset so just like uh, a bond you know if you buy a 10 uh, year maturity bond or 10 year more duration bond if the interest rates fall by 1% the price of the bond should go up by 1 uh, 10% right equities are a much longer duration bond and hence fall in interest rates is amplified in the valuations so the risk is if this reverses and that is what the investor should be careful about and that could be one of the big risks which can uh, which can destroy the party uh, destroy the party so sure, that's the point and in general you know from your point of view on a macro level uh, how the indian economy is doing and yes it is a long term as you told it is a long term growth story i agree because there are a lot of people you know still needs are to be met uh, but in general on a macro level how is the how is the indian economy doing for you know right now and projected in the next two three years sure so uh, just like most of the economies around the world indian economy also suffered massively uh, in in the first quarter uh, of this year it was a washout quarter uh, at that point of time the expectations of the impact of the pandemic on the overall gdp for the next two years was expected to be approximately 13% by and we are talking about this using a consensus of various global uh, uh, professional forecasting agencies okay this 13% impact has now got reduced to less than 10% because of the better than expected performance of the economy so the economy definitely has suffered a blow but the impact and the bl- impact of this blow is significantly narrowing as we move forward and as we see the company's results and as the economy rec- is improving so the demand is uh, surprising most of the companies and uh, it seems that lot of pent up demand or the demand which was not uh, there in the first quarter uh, it, it's now significantly appearing in companies pnl and balance sheets okay. so yeah okay. we are recovering well so we are seeing all prices going up no steel price going up cement price going yeah. up petrol price going up everything is going up right now um, if you you know if a, if a investor has to put his money right now Uh, where would you advise to put their money in you know in one of your funds say you you have many categories large and mid cap you know large cap balanced advantage fund hybrid equity fund lot of things if if someone wants to put today 10 lakhs that is assume what would you suggest uh, we would definitely recommend our asset allocation products like the balanced advantage fund simply because of the fact that uh, the investor need not worry about the market levels if the markets are uh, trading at an expensive valuation 
the balance advantage fund will reduce its equity allocation and when markets are cheap the balance advantage fund will increase its equity allocation so for example in a uh, bid of april or somewhere in april the balance advantage funds allocation to equity markets was 80% that's the maximum based on what in house uh, uh, based on our in house model we can go currently when we are saying that the markets are trading at an expensive level the uh, the allocation to equity has reduced sharply to 30% and 30%. And hence yeah and hence this is a very uh, uh, this is a very suitable product for most investors so you know they may even if they want they may put bulk amount so that you you take care the fund manager absolutely take care. absolutely because what we have seen is when markets are bad like for example it was in march and april nobody will come and put in fresh money however if your money is there in let's say a fund like balanced advantage fund the fund will take care of your money and invest it in in, in markets at that point of time similarly in the current market no one would want to redeem and you know leave the party but the balance advantage fund will take an emotional calls <laughs> very good very good that is a good category definitely i agree and one of the things is say like uh, you know when uh, the most of your uh, equity funds uh, probably i i would myself from my point of view i would put union mutual fund more like a equity player than a debt player so most of your equity funds are doing pretty well generally that performance everything on a comparative basis whatever so what is your you know what makes this and uh, you might have an investment process which leads to the performance you know because i am seeing across the category you guys are doing well so could could you please elaborate it briefly to the viewers so that they can understand how you know you are doing well yeah so first and foremost as you rightly said we uh, we are a fund house which follows an insti uh, institutional grade investment process and it is followed in both letter and spirit the performance is not an outcome of one person or one fund manager it is an outcome truly an outcome of the team so the stock selection for example is the responsibility of the analyst and portfolio construction is the responsibility of the fund managers now coming back to the investment process the way we manage uh, uh, funds is uh, uh, is that we uh, we have this uh, process which infuses science into the art of investing so what do we do is basically uh, we start with a investment universe of all companies more than 500 crores mm -hmm. uh, from that we distill out the companies based on our process which are companies which are good businesses run by good managements and available at reasonable valuation and from that we segment each of these companies into growth and bargain baskets and then create funds out of them using the uh, portfolio construction guidelines now these portfolio construction guidelines ensure that the funds are managed true to label mm -hmm. and true to label is very difficult at times you know because uh, uh, even the savvy categorization sometimes gives you lots of uh, leeway yeah. like some 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 lot of funds we have seen take lot of cash calls uh, multi cap funds or some of the other category we uh, don't take any such uh, deviations uh, uh, compared to what the fund ma uh, mandate is so what an investor pays for he gets that mm -hmm. right so uh, so i think the secret sauce is blending uh, sort of uh, a, a quantitative approach with qualitative approach uh, to to enhance the overall outcomes so so that's that's the secret sauce uh, which is behind uh improve performance for all the funds very good that's where you put this fair value concept absolutely absolutely so whether the uh, you know the stock is worth paying that much amount so you have your own calculation for that and accordingly yeah. you select so, the stock yeah. so all of this is uh, ha it has a blend of subjectivity and objectivity mm -hmm. to ensure that the funds are not just runs by the whims and fancies of a fund manager the investors are giving money to union mutual fund not vinay paharia so the idea is that we will man, man, the fund house will have a investment process which will be managed on a long term basis to ensure that investors get a consistent outcome 
and that clearly explains and now coming back to the you know sectors at times some sectors are attractive undervalued overvalued whatever you call it like three two years before pharma was undervalued kind of everyone right. no one was there to pick up after covid everyone is going behind pharma so similarly what are the sectors if you can put it you know what are sure, the sectors sure. that are overvalued right now or undervalued right now in your opinion yeah so we look at uh, sectors uh, broadly from a bottom up uh, basis and a top down basis the idea is to look at what is the overall sector returns over the next 5 years see uh, we need to appreciate that there are some some sectors where the underlying growth is weaker so the valuations will also be cheaper mm-hmm. some sectors the growth is higher so valuations will be higher but the idea is to blend both and see where we are getting the best potential return because that is what ultimately an investor is would care for as we speak today we think we still think that the it and telecom sectors offer the best potential uh, uh, risk reward opportunity and uh, we are overweight these sectors and we are underweight sectors uh, like utilities and consumer discretionary okay. 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 and you know why should a normal investor consider union mutual fund you know there are 40 fund houses in india 40 45 whatever it is number of fund houses are there there are a lot of competition why should you know an investor consider union mutual fund for business it is just i am asking from a you know investor absolutely absolutely so i would say that union mutual fund will stand as a brand which follows the an institutional grade investment process mm-hmm. which will ensure repeatability and consistency in outcomes Mm-hmm. see because uh, just imagine that uh, a painting by a picasso will be very different than painting by mf hussein right yeah, yeah. but uh, but when you look at science science is same for everyone whether you drop a ball in india or in america the outcomes will be the same yeah right so the more you infuse science the the more repeatable outcomes will you get and this is what union mutual fund stands for getting repeatable consistent outcomes which may not be the best but it will be very much consistent and investors will get what they pay for so being true to mandate true true and if you consider right now the markets you know generally i think the large cap index which is sensex or nifty 50 is you know has gone past previous highs etc whereas the small cap index or mid cap index i think they are not yet up to that mark they they are not they have not consistently crossed that previous peaks which was attained in 2018 or whatever if you can put it so is it will it be a good idea for little aggressive investors to put money in small cap mid cap at this point of time considering that in the last 3 years of under performance or it is better to stick with you know large mid cap or large cap kind of thing? so uh see we have actually uh, mr chokling we have written a complete white paper on you know how indexes the way indices are constructed they can confuse investors and they can lead to wrong outcomes as far as you know valuation of indices is concerned uh, and so on and so forth mm-hmm. so and i think that is precisely what is happening when you look at large cap index versus a mid cap or a small cap index in uh, internally the way we look at uh, all of these three segments is that we have a fund house universe of about 185 companies of which about 80 companies are uh, large cap and approximately 50 55 companies in small cap and mid cap we look at what is the prospective returns that if an investor invests in these companies today as a basket what is the potential returns he will get over the next 5 years or 10 years mm-hmm. so that will capture everything if the company is growing fast whether the company is having high roe so on and so forth looking at uh, the consolidated outcomes we we think today large caps and small caps offer better prospective returns than mid caps okay. so 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 that's how the things are across different categories okay 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 so large and small are better than mid caps okay yeah okay that is good and Vinay Paharia, when he puts his money, 
where are you putting how are you allocating i put my money where my mouth is which is uh, <laughs> when whenever i recommend my funds i put my money in my funds okay so, so, are, you, are you a pure equity investor are you have allocation debt gold or things? no so i would uh, I, i would be looking at the asset allocation so i definitely do asset allocation and and i would recommend asset allocation to all investors because uh because that is the real secret sauce for having a uh, risk adjusted optimized return outcome over a longer period of time and you are you know advice for retail investors in general in general you know you might have read lot of books you might be following lot of things in your mindset mindset so what would you advise uh, to retail investors you know periodical rebalancing or exiting or consistent investment you know continuously pushing money like through sip or bulk whatever so what would be you know in general i am talking you can just i am mentioning something but however you can uh, put up your things uh, what would you recommend to retail investors from your investment philosophy at the end sure so uh, so first and foremost uh, you know uh, what i have observed is uh, uh, investing is a field in which a uh, lot of investors would want to do a lot of things without the help of professionals so for example when you want to uh, fight a legal case you always go to a lawyer when you have a problem with uh, your health you go to a doctor but yeah when you want to invest you always have second thoughts whether to use a professional advisor or not i would recommend that investors should definitely consider taking the advice of a professional advisor to manage their finances to invest and uh, and advise them accordingly so that they can reach their goals properly and with correct advice over a longer period of time that is money which is well spent so that is first advice second is i would say that uh, uh, investors should uh not speculate in the markets not consider is it as a place where you know you you are here to just make money this is a place where you save your money and ensure that this money grows over a longer period of time if we look at the trends uh, over the last 1 to 2 years we have seen lot of people uh, entering the markets with a wrong intention with a wrong sort of a belief that you know you can make quick money it is quite dangerous and it can you know uh, uh, spoil lot of people's uh, future because uh, because we need to always remember equity markets will always fluctuate never take the highs and and look at your returns from there and never take the lows and compute your returns from there we need to stay in the markets for long and it is only after this long period of wait which is akin to the hard work which you need to do for any earning any money so you need to stay in the market for the long term to earn your keep so i would uh, recommend investors to to invest in markets for a minimum of 3 year period and not treat it as a speculating uh, den of speculation so so i would say that the, these are two of my uh, advice okay. for investors good good and the you know, the in general the, we see that the developed economies in most of the developed economies invested has gone down quite a bit on a macro level probably it seems india is also following that trend you know i remember when i used to earn like 18% bank deposit nre deposit rates when i was overseas 18% 19% and all now even getting 5 and a half 6% is a tough job so generally in the in the in the next cycle you know probably in the next six months or one year if interest rates starts going up in india whether you know how long how much it can go up or is seeing the trend general downtrend in interest rates in the longer term yeah. so uh, i would say that uh, we have looked at interest rates in india a lot of developed markets lot of emerging markets for the last 30 to 40 years so one thing which investors should always remember that there is a difference between nominal rates which is the rates which the banks offer where the rates which we actually realize in our in, in our investments these are the nominal interest rates we always need to look at the real interest rates because that is the money which is actually earned for giving uh, your uh, your principal on 
uh, on interest so for example when we were earning 18% as you rightly said uh, in the early 90s at that time inflation was quite rampant we had inflation to the tune of 15% so the real rates of return was about approximately 3% in india and in most of the parts of the world as well this 3% has uh, in the uh, in the nine, uh, 90 to uh, 2000 uh, decade that is a, in the years from 1990 to 2000 reduced to approximately 2% in the next decade it reduced to 1 and uh, from 2010 onwards it started gradually its descent towards negative territory in the developed world and uh, towards very close to 1 and 0% in India. So we think that the real interest rates may rebound a bit but don't expect a, a surge in interest rates unless and until there is a in significant increase in inflation which might show up in the nominal rates but we don't think so that there will be a massive increase in the real interest rates in the next uh, few years okay. Okay. That is the good news for consumers you know, people who are yeah. buying houses cars etc et absolutely although it may hit a little hard on the senior citizens but you know uh, for the general economy majority of the economy it, it, it is a good news if I may pick your brain on two asset classes, other two asset classes, if it is okay with you. Uh, one is gold. Where is it heading? The other is real estate. Are your thoughts, your opinion? Generally, because in the recent past, I'm seeing a lot of uh, interest towards real estate, people buying houses, etc., etc. Maybe because of the low interest rate or, you know, uh, the real estate has gone a saturation point and picking up. So your thoughts. So I would say gold is, uh, uh, it's uh, it's like a, a store of value uh, and it is, it is a store of value because of the perception of store of value. And uh, if you look at it, the real uh, gold is just a metal which has shiny properties. It's more valuable and ductile, that's it. But it gets value because people are ready to accept it as a currency. There is a lot of discussion on bitcoins and and some of the other cryptocurrencies and how their prices are going up etc the reason why we are seeing is because there is an acceptance for some of those currencies relative to gold mm -hmm. it is hence very difficult to put a price or fair value for gold because it is very much based on perception over a longer period of time we have seen that gold uh, is uh, a gold prices appreciate if uh, the US dollar depreciates and vice versa. Uh, but uh, to be very frank, very difficult to put a price for gold. Coming to real estate, uh, once again, it's a, it's an asset class which has done well for investors because uh, it is amongst the few asset classes where people, most Indians have leveraged themselves and uh, put money and uh, they've made good returns. So, so maybe it's... Uh, uh, it's good uh, in that sense, but uh, we need to remember that uh, that investors have to diversify themselves. If we look at most Indian uh, uh, Indians uh, wealth, it is blocked in illiquid real estate. True. So, so the point is that it, it is not that it is bad, but you need to diversify across asset class. And uh, that is the secret for your long-term financial well-being. So yes, real estate would also do well because it is a physical asset. And if the inflation rises going forward, there may be a, a, a case in, in, the, in the making for real estate as well. So, so yeah, that, uh, that may be an attractive asset class, but of course it is, uh, it is uh, very much uh, location dependent, et cetera, et cetera. And it has its own, uh, uh, pros and cons but yeah as an asset class it also has a good potential yeah maybe ne next to stocks or equity mutual funds i would put it in that way <laughs> yeah that, that's good uh before i mean I, we are coming to a close uh just i would like to have one more question and then we can uh, wind it up i would like to know you know you, uh, you are you know just some personal info your hobbies what do you do like this like whatever you want to share with us sure 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 so uh my uh, what i do in my uh, my free time one is uh, watch uh, bollywood movies uh so i am uh, i am a big fan of that 
uh, apart from that uh, of course the other uh, other love is for investing so i do read a lot of uh, 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 investing related books etc uh, because uh, that is an area which where my passion is so 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 these are two, two things which i generally do whenever i have free time and they keep me busy for most of the time very good thanks vinay thanks for uh, you know sharing your thoughts your opinions uh, with our viewers and this will uh, i am sure that this will give a more view about union amc and union mutual fund to investors and your thoughts on the thing because uh, you know even uh, in your investor days you were doing pretty well i know and all the best for union mutual fund and to you and once again thank you very much thank you it's my pleasure thank, thank you for inviting me. yeah sure sure thank you have a good Bye. day